Daily Lives of High School Boys, one of my all-time favorite anime shows done by Studio Sunrise in collaboration with Square Enix and is a comedy school slice of life and shonen kind of anime. Honestly, this anime doesn't have a story at all other than what the title says. It is about three boys being in high school and having fun. Therefore, this series could be mistaken for just a normal slice of life anime because of the title, but it is so much more than that. Well, it is it is basically like a slice of life, but there's just a lot, a lot of comedy thrown into it, which for me makes it really, really good. We see them argue and fight about the most ridiculous things. They love to roleplay, they love video games and manga, they go to an all-boys school and because of that, they are pretty curious about girls as well. I could go on with this list because a lot of situations happen in the series and I can only guarantee you that you will laugh your ass off. Daily Lies of High School Boys has one of the best first episodes I've ever seen. It just drags you in right away and it shows you how the series is from episode 1 and it will be like that for the rest of the series. So if you don't like the first episode and if you don't like the dry humor and the overreacting and just high school boys being high school boys, well, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, you, you can't expect more from that. That is how the whole series is and it's amazing. Our three main characters aren't alike which made everything so much more interesting. We have Tabata Hidenori, who is my favorite character in the show and definitely made me laugh the most. He's more known as the leader of the group as he always comes up with crazy ideas. He's the kind of guy that overthinks way too much, is easily annoyed and gets bored easily. Next up we have Tanaka Yoshitake. This guy is impulsive, loyal and has a lot of friends and tends to go with the crazy ideas Hidenori comes up with. And last but not least, we have Tadakuni. Now, this one I liked at first, but he kind of faded away in the series later on for some reason, which wasn't too bad, but it was just weird not seeing him a lot anymore. Tadakuni is the guy that likes to overreact to everything silly that the other guys do. He's concerned about them and he is seen as the only normal guy out of those three. There's times where the characters have conversations about stuff that doesn't make sense at all or they just come up with crazy ideas where you're just like, how? <laughs> I can see how people would think that this would become boring after a while, especially since it's a 24 minute episode series. But it doesn't get boring at all. The thing that they do is they split up most of the episodes in two or three parts. And sometimes those three little stories are connected and sometimes it's just three different or two different stories that will just make you laugh and will be about different subjects. There are also running gags throughout the series that will come back in every two or three episodes. For example, we have this girl that sits by the riverbank the whole time and Hidinori who also likes to sit there, always comes across her and there's just so many hilarious moments with those two and I really like the moments when they show us that back every time because that running gag never gets old. Like the girl is hilarious and she's also like one of the only girls that is in the series that you will see a lot so those two, I ship them so much, I'm just gonna say that already but <laughs> those two are just hilarious and whenever I, I saw the riverbank, I was like, yes, it's gonna happen again, I like it. Speaking of girls, like I said, there aren't too many girls in this series and when there are girls, they barely show how they look. And what I mean by that is they never draw the eyes of the girls. It looks like there's just some shadow over it and they talk but they don't say much and mostly they aren't important either. So the ones that are important in this series, I think there's only two, so like the sister of one of the guys and then you have the girl at the riverbank obviously. For, for those two, you can actually see their eyes, so that means that they are important and they will most likely come back. And I think that was that was pretty cool to do because this is a show about boys and I like how they did that. I can see how people might maybe find this weird or maybe a bit annoying, I don't know, but it didn't annoy me at all. I thought it was 
rather creative in a way. Also at one point in the series you will have little stories at the end of each episode which is called High School Girls Are Funky. It's basically a short mini episode that you will get and it only lasts for like five minutes but it's basically just girls being in high school. And I have to say at first this was really cool to see. I didn't expect them to do this. It was fun but after like six episodes or something I kind of got bored with it to be honest. I still thought it was a great idea but the way they did it and the characters itself for the girls they kind of annoyed me and it also didn't really seem realistic. I'm not gonna say that the series is so realistic when it comes to boys being in high school but it is it is the stuff that you would imagine them to do and for the girls sometimes it doesn't make any sense at all they behave more like boys than that they behave as girls so i think i maybe expected them to behave more like themselves instead of the guys from the series but overall that was fun to see i did like that idea but the high school boys will always be so much better than the girls. After re-watching this series to make this review, I found a lot of similarities with Gintama, especially when it came to the comedy and how it was done exactly, and also a lot of the voice actors seemed to be the same ones. And then it turned out that the director of the series is the same director from Gintama, and also the studio is the same one, and the voice actors, like I thought, were the main character and then one of the other main characters of Gintama as well and I was like yeah this actually makes a lot of sense because now thinking about it since I just started Gintama a few months ago and I'm at episode 100 or something like that now I got used to that type of comedy but I got used to it because it was Gintama so rewatching Daily Lives I was like Yep, this is the exact same thing, but without fighting, and this is awesome. Daily Lives actually collaborated with Square Enix, so the gaming company, and you can clearly see that because they, they left quite a lot of RPG references in the series for you to laugh at, and those are some things that I enjoyed as well. I love how they have done everything, and I have absolutely no complaints about the sound and animation. It was simple, and it gave me happy feels, just like I expected it to be. The opening song is awesome, like a typical shonen song, and then the ending song was a rather, um, it was special, but honestly, I would rather skip the ending song every time and just listen to the opening song. Then we have the voice actors for this show who were pretty perfect and like I said there are some that star in Gintama as well and some other noticeable ones that I saw. Overall the series was a super fun watch for me. I remember watching it for the first time and I just watched all 12 episodes in one sitting because I couldn't stop and I couldn't get enough of it and it didn't get boring for me at all or like it didn't feel like it was the same jokes over and over again either, so that is something that I really enjoyed about it and just the characters on their own are pretty special and knowing that after I watched it for the first time, I actually rewatched it a few days later in one sitting again, that means a lot. So when I watched it for the second time, I was like, wow, I still love this series after rewatching it and it's still, it's still hilarious like the first time, so this series has a high high rewatchable value. Unfortunately, it is only 12 episodes, but I do feel like that was enough since I can rewatch it every time I want to. If you want to have more Daily Lives of High School Boys, there's still the manga, and apparently they go a bit deeper into the story, as for there is a story, but I mean, there's stuff that happens between the boys, silly stuff that they bring up again later in a manga which is pretty interesting so if you want to have more daily lives just go ahead and read the manga i don't think you will be disappointed that is it for my review if you are interested in more comedy shows i made a review of barakamon and guguri kokuri-san they are both slice of life comedy kind of shows except for guguri kokuri-san has more fantasy elements and stuff in there but they are both really great and they both have awesome humor but it's just a little bit different than this one I would say so if you want to check that out you can check that out somewhere here or in the description below I will leave that there as well I had a lot of fun making this video I hope you had a lot of fun watching it if you did 
and you like it you can give it a thumbs up or you can share this and all of that stuff and just leave your thoughts in the comments what you think about the show or if you are going to check it out or not so that is it i will see you soon bye